does it it tells you here this is vorticity magnitude square minus the strain rate square so if it is positive it means that vorticity magnitude is higher than the strain rate okay so if it is positive it means that vorticity magnitude is higher and that means that uh, there is a uh, propensity to create vortices more than the deformation strain rate deformation okay so typically it is used positive q values is used to indicate where the vortices are being shed okay Yeah, what happens? They have same units. What is it is the rotational and the strain rate is so the thing is is this deformation more than this deformation? So that is what it is saying. This is a well established indicator for what is it uh, vertical flows. Okay. If it is negative it means the things are being going yeah. beyond the No then 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 the linear deformation is more strain rate deformation is more. So like you have linear deformation, angular deformation. So this is an indicator that is used for those purposes. Okay. So this is how we establish performance indicators, performance, uh, performance of a vertical uh, uh, device. Now what you can do in this case is I have given you some exercise for to, for tutorials, and uh, that exercise you can do in this case. Although I have hinted about it, uh, divide impeller zone in five parts and calculate pressure rise in each part. I have shown you this uh, qualitatively through this this curve here here so for example here in the first part pressure rise is small it comes goes up goes down so gradually pressure is rising here and then it becomes stable at this point so i, I would like you to divide in five parts and show me how much of this pressure rise takes place in this part in this part, in this part and this part as you can see goes up here, goes up here. So this rise, this much rise is taking place here, this much rise is taking place here. So you can see these two parts contribute maximum rise. On the inner first three parts it is hardly any pressure rise. So you can see which part is contributing more to the pressure rise and why. Okay? So that is affect your design then you can take this into picture modify the design so that in the first part also you can start getting same type of pressure rise or almost of same scale pressure rise. Okay. Then calculate change in the pressure contributions as the flow rate changes. So as the flow rate changes I have written flow rate change sorry for my grammar. So it, the flow rate change changes the mistake here calculate change in pressure contributions as per the speed change when we change the speed of the impeller how the pressure contributions change of different parts and then carry out parametric investigations change the impeller angle change the impeller dimensions and calculate all these things again this is good tutorial exercise for you but this type of things can help you in more in depth analysis okay any questions on this right so this is what we were doing for the performance analysis so now we fault diagnostics in VAD what happens if there is a fault that it starts to appear in in the ventricular wise if suppose thrombosis has taken place instrument thrombosis has taken place how will the performance be affected and how we can monitor that performance how we can quantify that performance. Okay. So what I have done is in the top this is normal device that we have taken earlier the this device has a small clot formation here a small clot formation here spherical in nature and this device has a bigger clot formation here so i've got two clots formed in this device and now i'm going to simulate the flow at the same condition and see how the pressure values change or how the velocity values change okay so this is what we are going to do and then based on that then we will try to estimate the what type of fault ideally I would like to know from the external measurements what is the type of fault where it is and um, how big it is how severe it is 
this is from patient's point of this is what we would like to know. Suppose if there is a patient with VAD inside and a fault has developed, I would like to know this in advance that well now if there is a fault that we can save the patient by changing or repairing the VAD. This is what my aim is. But what we are doing is first we are seeing what happens when a fault develops and then we will develop the strategies to predict it well in advance. Okay? So let us see. So I have created the faults here and I have given you how you can create it. So for this purpose in the design modeler the same model that you have created earlier unfreeze the rotor you remember we frozen it is not it. So unfreeze the rotor then go to create where we created the cylinder go to create primitives and go to sphere and create the following spheres plague 1, plague 2 so put x is equal to 10, y equal to 10 sorry x is equal to 0, y equal to 10 z is equal to 0 and operation is cut material if you do these two operations you will be having two design modeler files with two faults okay in one case this sphere is of 1 millimeter radius in the second case this sphere is of 2 millimeter radius okay so just go to project open design modeler and do this operation a fault will be created once the fault is created freeze the rotor again again uh, do it freezing update the mesh just do not do anything just go to mesh update it no change just uh, uh, give the values uh, sorry the name the faces at impeller shroud there are some more faces now because of this here so these are the faces they become part of the impeller shroud update the mesh open fluent we specify boundary conditions as, as it were there go to solution and click initialize and run the solver. So this way you can run the fluent okay. So it is very simple straightforward same files that you have created you can create faults in there okay. Any question on this? Any of you feel confident? Have you all run once this thing? No? What? Yes or no? You are silent. <laughs> done ones they have created the drawings all of them hmm? okay so first part is done everyone has the first part so this part is just fault diagnosis part uh, fault part and let us see what happens when we have the faults and this is quite interesting you can see faults here okay if you compare flow from here to here this is only small effect here very small effect here but you can see the higher effect here negative pressure and positive pressure on this side so this is what faulty system does you can see some effect on the flow field but you will see soon that uh, let us see now CP, the, the CP pressure. The, in the first case, you had seen that this is the pressure rise along the length, is not it? Pressure rise along the length. What is happening now? Negative pressure, bubble formation can take place, cavitation. Uh, and you can see the plague is affecting negative pressure drastically, very, very low pressure is going here. So locally lots of problem can happen if plague formation takes place okay lots of problem can happen although the overall pressure rise is same almost it is not much effect but the locally flow, para, flow parameters are completely different along that line. Okay. Differential pressure again you see it is completely um, this is a normal one as typically we see for a normal pump but in this case in the plague one there is abnormality here and plague 2 there is an abnormality here. Now just think along this in normal case we are getting this pressure profile in the plague 1 I am getting this pressure profile in the plague 2 I am getting this pressure profile and you can see these pressure profiles am I causing problem? 
these pressure profiles are unique, aren't they? They are different. So, can we develop some intelligence? Now, I know that there are some IT people here. Can we develop some artificial intelligence where this profile can uniquely be related to this plaque? And this, this pressure profile can be uniquely related to the bigger plaque, bigger, bigger clot. So, that is what we have to do in the uniquely relate these profiles that we can measure obviously and can we link it back to the type of thrombus type of the clotting, clotting that is being formed so that we can inform people in advance. For example, if you start getting pressure profile like this what will it mean? Clotting has started. When it goes to here clot, clot has become bigger. So, can we get severity, location and the what is third thing severity, location and the size of the clot from these pressure profiles that is our ultimate aim. But at least you are getting how the plaque formation or the clot formation affects the pressure and uh, pressure mass curve. Making sense? Any questions on this? Any questions? So, let us see axial velocity now. So, if you look at the axial velocity again velocity is here reasonably high because of the type of geometry that we have. With plaque formation you can see very high velocity zone here and you can see low velocity zone now here and slightly lower velocity zone here with the plaque formation takes place. Again these are just contours we do not get much information through that, but uh, we, we get this here. The radial velocities are very small almost insignificant in this case and this is the tangential velocity which is very high in this particular part and you can see that the flow pattern is drastically affected by the plaque, plaque formation here. So, it is drastically affecting the plaque here. This is the velocity magnitude and now, but this is the most important this shows you the how the local velocity is affected along those four lines by the plaque formation. So, here at the inlet this is the normal, but because of plaque formation even at the inlet velocity profile is different. Now, if you had some way of measuring velocity at the inlet can we revert back to which type of plaque has formed? If at the inlet we put a sensor on VAD which tells us about the velocity profile we can know what is happening within the VAD is not it. If you look at the velocity profile in the wad at just entrance as you can see normal one is having this behavior, but the local velocities have become very high in the top top zone. So, this again is indicative of the plaque formation in the or the or the plot formation in the wad. Line 4 as you can see again the normal wad will behave as this, but a plaked uh, wad will have different behavior. At line 4 we are not seeing any difference between the two plaque uh, two uh, types of blocks formed and at the end also we are not seeing much difference between the two types of blocks formed. So, based on this we can see that information about the plot can best be had from the inlet of the impeller than the outlet of the impeller. So, this can tell us uh, which type of clot has formed, how big the clot is and where is the location of the clot. Okay. Let us see, now we have seen if a clot forms inside how it affects the local flow and global flow. Now, we will develop some indicative mechanism, some predictive mechanism that well clot is formed let us do something about it, analyze it a bit a bit in, in more detail and you can see here the power requirement. This is the normal word and de depending upon the mass flow rate you can see how much power it is consuming. Okay. So, your battery is providing this power, but if your word is plotted there is a clot in the wad you can see power nature is completely abnormal is not it. So, from your battery the, the start drawing 
a normal map. You have a sensor in the battery, tells you the waveform of the power given to the wad. You can clearly see that something is going wrong in, inside the wad. Maybe a clot. If clot gets bigger, again this gets this nature. What I'm saying here is that if you look at these patterns, these patterns are unique to the clot form. So using CFD, you can create hundreds of these simulations, plot hundreds of these patterns, and then your computer science specialists can carry out the, the analysis of this and they can relate this with the unique type of the fault that has taken place. So the waveform of your battery can tell you which type of plot has formed, how big it is, where it is, but it will need lots of artificial to get that form analysis, digital signal processing. Many of you will be from electronics back. You are electronics? No? No one is electronics here? Give you waveform for this. Now it is uniquely back to the type of faults that you have. So you can create hundreds of simulations, putting clot right from here. So what you can do here is I have just taken two clots here. I have just taken one clot here and one clot here. You can start putting clots from here up to this particular point of variety of sizes and then you can generate pressure profiles, velocity profiles and uh, uh, obviously you do not have to computer will do it for you. So, you start to put it there and create all the power profiles and then use your algorithm to link the type of prof, uh, fault uniquely with the type of velocity profile and pressure profile you are getting and then you have your data bank ready. Just you need one signal and it will tell you what type of fault it is creating. So, this is a very active part of research at this moment where CFD being use, is being used as the fault diagnosis. Is this a technology of uh, Suppose a You are very right actually the, 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 the opportunities are immense. Yes. For example, let us see um, someone has got bad, we got some signals that something is getting wrong through this. Okay. Now, if you have Google Glass and you have got all these simulations, so combining these simulations with the global data you can tell in situ, in situ, in situ within the VAT where the clot is being formed. What yeah, or what size? And this is my uh, sort of uh, desire. Digital twin. So this is one more step towards creating a digital twin, because all this can be integrated with Google Glass and other information to have uh, to have uh, basic argument reality uh, where the clot is formed, how big and how small it is. Obviously, this has to be correct for that. But there is a variety of applications, not only from diagnostics, treatment, as you said, it can be used for treatment as. Yeah. So, we will do that later, but right from the analysis, design, prediction, treatment for everything we can use this type of simulations. Okay. <coughs> now, then after that for the three conditions, we can have the wall shear stress distribution and you can see near this part wall shear stress is reasonably high near the clot. So, rapid accumulation of the uh, of rapid accumulation of growth can take place here turbulence intensity vorticity again you can see very high near the plaque region now this is marvelous this curve is marvelous you can see here efficiency earlier we were getting 30 40 percent efficiency because of plaque formation efficiency has come down drastically. So, efficiency has drastically come down. So, you need your battery has to discharge a lot, a lot more power. So, this can tell us how the blood clot is affecting the efficiency of the system. Okay. 
Now that is all for this particular lecture. If you have any more questions on this?